you're listening to the Goose Radio Show. He's the best of the best of the best. He's a wonderful voice. If you don't like him, you don't have a soul. I'm sure your sister will. Hey, babe, you want to go out? How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another broadcast of the Goof Norton Radio Show. We're here, again, live, episode 57, getting close to this end of season one. I'm excited. We got a bunch of news stories for you today. Five, five whole news stories for you guys. We got some Fortnite news, some Apex news, some Fallout 76, and some Borderlands, Borderlands 3 news. So I am ready to go. I hope you guys are all doing great out there. Uh, it's been a... a uh, pretty odd last few days i've been trying to get you know a bunch of recordings done because i'm gonna be not here um for a whole month or so so uh, i try to be, i've been trying to get videos ready for that so welcome and hopefully you'll enjoy your time here all right so let's get down to business apex legends news is up first Apex Legends recently released a solo uh, mode, uh, play, uh, yeah, solo playable mode. Have a fun time joining me here. Yeah, thanks for that late, late drop there, you weirdo. Um, so they re- recently released a solo mode for Apex Legends. If you're an Apex Legends player, and I got this article from PCGamer.com, is where I get all my gaming news from. An article by Evan. So let's get down to it. Apex Legends. Iron Crown Collection event is now live, and a new update bringing with bringing with it new temporary solo modes, uh, solos mode, and at least seven new stylish medieval themed character skins. The Iron Crown Collection is bigger and much more complicated than I expected. It has a whole separate uh, unlock system for twelve legendary and twelve epic items, a mixture of character skins, uh, gun skins, and other cosmetics. It also crucially, crucially adds a new currency, crowns, for unlocking these items that you can get by completing special Iron Crown challenges, uh, separate and concurrent with Season 2 challenges. Six additional limited time-limited items are available in the Crown Event Shop. And, okay, is that the end of the article? No? Okay, all right. I, I got scared there for a second. Uh, Iron Crown Packs can be purchased with Apex Coins, but there's 700, not 100. In smaller news, Apex's new ma- Apex map, oh, uh, in smaller news, Apex's map uh, continues to transform with this incremental update. Legless Daredevil Octane has taken over a western edge of the map. It looks like it's south of Air Base and thrown down an extreme sports playground of sorts. With a fiery ring sitting in the middle of a few ramps and jump pads, this may have been intended as a nod to Apex's recent tournament appearance at the X Games in Minneapolis. It's Minnesota for anybody not in America. Um, which later was canceled, was canceled from broadcast on ESPN2. If anyone is lucky enough to fight through a final ring in this spot, please send this guy your clip. He will be happy to watch it. Uh, we also learned that Respawn will be running a bonus XP this week, this Friday uh, through Sunday, August 16th through 18th below. I've screenshotted a few, uh, few new skins. Uh, the new Lifeline Legendary seems to transfer transform her from a cheerful healer into a metallic murder queen. And there are screenshots with the article. There's a lot of pictures in this article. I will leave this article in the description of wherever you find this podcast. So wherever you get your podcast, now that we're on multiple platforms, we're on, uh, we're on anchor. We're on Spotify. We're on Google podcasts. We're on Spreaker. We're on YouTube. We're on SoundCloud. We're everywhere, and we're on Radio Public. Sorry, Radio Public. I keep forgetting Radio Public's name, which is the weirdest thing in the world. Like, it's it's RP, and I'm like, it's Radio what? What is it, Radio? It's Radio what? I always forget. And then we've got some Fallout 76 news. 
about about a Fallout player living underneath the map. If that doesn't tell you pretty much how Fallout 76 is, then I don't know what to tell you. So this article by Fraser Brown, another PC gaming PC gamer article. Uh, Fallout 76 lets you plonk down your camp almost anywhere on the map, but it's no small task finding somewhere that has lots of room for expansion and is also easy to defend when other players or monsters come prowling around. Why do you reload, Paige? I'm just reading words. Player Mrs. P has found a clever solution to that problem. However, by building her camp beneath the game, where there's nothing but a vast expanse of empty space... Uh, the entrance to Mrs. P Camp is above ground, but you can't just walk through a door to get her to her secret sub uh, terrarian sub subterranean yeah subterranean uh, base. I'm like, what is that word? Yeah. Instead, you need to activate a cooking station that's that's hidden in a wall, which will then deposit you underneath the world. You can see how to make your own underground entrance here. Uh, there's a link there, and take a tour of Mrs. P's base below. Hmm. That's actually really interesting. So, if people can get in there, what's to stop them from, like, looting and killing her? And Mrs. P tweeted out earlier that uh, she did an underground-based tour on her... Twitter, somebody's calling me. Not right now. I'm a little bit busy. Uh, she has a she has a video up on her Twitter that was posted on August 5th, 2019. So you can go check that out. It's Mrs. P or uh, her... Handle is at Mrs. P123. It took her a long time to get the trick working, uh, she told Kotaku. But since then, she's been able to create a proper base, complete with floating greenhouses and walkways below, which is just an empty space. And uh, she says, the white space under the map is instant death. She said, if, if they walk off the platform, they die. So I put a fence up to keep people in. The, the camp itself is pretty great. Uh, I keep the vendors above ground and the generator and the generator below ground to glitch the power line through the ground. It took me a few days to get the entrance itself to work. You know, I died a few times. Uh, from her lair, she also she's also able to spy on the world above and watch nukes going off. She's got plans to target her camp and see what happens. Uh, science requires sacrifice. <laughs> totally worth it. While this makes her sound like a supervillain, she apparently welcomes guests and shoppers to her underground abode. I've played a lot more of uh, I played a lot more of seventy six Fallout seventy six than I thought uh, I would because of the because of the base building. But my shack is starting to look pretty rubbish now that I look at Mrs. P's creation. Sure, it's got a nice view, comfy chairs, and I've got no complaints from visitors. But it's just got a regular door, and it doesn't exist outside of reality. It's very plain. So that is uh, Fraser Brown's article and his take on Mrs. Miss, uh, Mrs. P's underground base in Fallout 76. And Fallout 76, this is this. I mean, this is a huge example of people like expo exploiting the game uh, just to get an advantage, and it's absolutely uh, amazing. I love it. Sorry for one second. I gotta check and see who just called me. Make sure it's not the person I was. Nope. Oh, okay. Cool. And just it's just a random number that called me. That's weird. Does anybody ever get random calls? Because I know uh, a lot of people, at least here in America, we do. We get like spam calls from like bots and whatnot. I I, may, I do my best to block those numbers because I'm like, eh, it's pretty worthless. Like you're not real. You're not a real person. Everybody wants a piece of your money. Like, oh, you owe us this, even though I don't owe you that. You just think I owe that because, I don't know. Like, I've never bought or anything from you, but you somehow, I owe you money. Or somehow it involved the IRS. I'm like, I pay my taxes, so I don't know what you're calling me for. Ugh. And I know you weirdos know this. Alright, so this next story will be one of three because I don't know which one's gonna load first. I had these preloaded before I even started this, like I always do. Because it's a smart thing to do. So before I okay, before I go into the article, let's go and talk a little bit about trolls because I experienced a lot of this last night. 
and it was hilarious, and I had some fun with it. But so last night, um, I was watching somebody stream, who uh, will hopefully be a guest on the show soon. And I'm a mod in her chat, because uh, we've been talking for a while, so she knows she trusts me, so it's cool. Um, but now, because uh, since she started doing Twitch. Uh, she's a former model, so people a lot of people come in the chat, and they say, of course, they say inappropriate things and all that stuff, and I'm like, you guys are terrible and thirsty little teenagers, and I know they're teenagers because of how they talk and what they ask, and I'm like, you guys are just idiots, um, and so I just had so much fun. I put a timeout there and ban over there and ban in this guy and ban in that guy, timing out this person and ban in that person. I just went nuts. I have never had to ban or time out so many people and I had so much fun with it. And I was doing it for my phone. So it was just like click, 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 click. It was so much fun. I, guys out there, if you're, if you're an internet troll and you're listening to this, stop it. Do something better with your life because if you have if you have the time on your hands to go on some random person stream who you don't know personally, don't know at all, they're just streaming and uh, you know trash them because of why? Because they won't do what you say, because they won't send you nudes, because they won't you know do what you want. Oh, poor baby, get over it. The world doesn't revolve around you, and you certainly aren't going to control anything. We're adults here in the real world, okay, and we have our own rights, and we can choose. Or uh, choose to do and not do something. Because, you know, it's America. And if anything, it's the, if you're on the internet doing this stuff, you're a weirdo and you're a creep. And that's how you get banned off of sites because of that. Don't do something stupid to ruin your reputation. Honestly, it's not worth it. It's not worth being known. I was like, oh, that guy? Oh, yeah, he no, he's a total pervert. You know, don't let him anywhere around. It's not. It's not good to have... A bad name surrounding you. It's not cool either. It doesn't make you look cool. It like it makes you look like a weirdo. Like you're a total creep that no one wants to be around or interact with because like yeah yeah that guy because that's the guy next time you're gonna see on the news being like he had some inappropriate pictures of some young children that he shouldn't have had. Same people. So, uh, like it's really weird, really weird. Don't don't be that person. Don't go on some random girl stream. And ask her for, don't ask her for anything, you know, freaking just say hi and enjoy the stream. Don't, don't go in there asking for sex or asking to see her body parts. I'm like, bro, first of all, you know better. This is Twitch. And on any streaming platform, whether it's Mixer, Twitch, YouTube, whatever platform, don't do it. Because you look like an idiot. And then when someone like a, when a good mod comes around and bans you, it's just like, well. You had your chance, and I don't give people, like, many chances. You get maybe two strikes, if that. But for most people, it's just one strike, because I'm like, you know what? I was like, you you had your chance. Uh, if the first thing you say when you come in the chat is inappropriate, you're just getting banned. I'm not going to time you out. Ban. Gone. You're done. Get out of here. Oh, man, I do it so fast. I'm just, they're just in there. As soon as they, the first thing they say is stupid, I'm like, you're gone. You're gone. And not just like stupid. I like stupid stuff I can accept, but like if you're saying, you know, perverted things, um, just totally inappropriate things for Twitch streams, then you're gone. I'm not going to freaking keep you there. You're gone. You're not worth keeping. So up next, we got some Borderlands 3 news. Uh, apparently Borderlands 3 will not be preloadable. An article from Andy Chalk on PCGamer.com. It's it's common practice for digital storefronts like Steam to provide a preload period ahead of a game's release so that the moment it goes live, hot to trot fans can dive face first into it immediately rather than having to wait for it to download. Excuse me. It also ke- it also helps keep those uh, hot to trot fans from demolishing servers as they all try to download it at precisely the same moment. Understandable. For the upcoming Borderlands 3, however, that's not going to be an option. There's a uh, tweet here at uh, Tim Sweeney. So I hate to bother you with a question, uh, with a question you probably don't know the answer to, but will we be able to preload Borderlands 3 and will it release at midnight at the, uh, the min- at midnight, the night of, of release? Uh, and then was going to take off from work the next day if that's the case. 
And then Tim Sweeney replied, I'm sorry, we won't have support for preloading in the Borderlands release time frame. What's surprising uh, in this is that enable preloading is actually marked as being enable as being enabled in the EGS roadmap uh, Trello, which says that Epic released preload uh, functionality to third-party games on the store in May. So what's the deal? Epic boss Tim Sweeney described the situation as complicated, quote unquote. He goes on to say, we've released support for file preloading, which is sufficient for some games, but we aren't certain it's up to the it's up to the demands of uh, a blockbuster like Borderlands. Uh, he he tweeted out, but then to complicate things further, he expressed confidence that Epic servers will be up to the task of handling the crush of excited Borderlands Borderlanders, who will all be smashing their download now buttons simultaneously when Borderlands Three goes live. Somebody else tweeted at um, Tim Sweeney saying that in that case, are your servers going to be sufficient for the launch? Will they handle the traffic? When people when people flood to EGS to download the game at the la- at launch, will we be even able to log in? It seems like you guys and GB just put in no uh, cooperative effort to make this launch smooth. And Tim Sweeney replied, "Yes, Epic Services have handled over 10 million." Peak users during the big Fortnite events with record internet traffic. And then he posted a link to new Fortnite releases, new Fortnite release downloads shatter internet traffic record. So, uh, he's, uh, he's pretty confident. He seems pretty confident and I hope this goes well. Cause I know there's going to be a ton of people. I haven't pre-ordered mine cause I'm going to wait till it comes out. But, uh, the end of the article here says a number of people responding to Sweeney's tweet have expressed doubt about his explanation, but if Epic is re- uh, willing to take a high profile PR hit on what should be one of the biggest releases yet, because you know, this is going to come up repeatedly between now and the Borderlands three launch on September 13th. Every time someone asks when preloading starts, uh, then I'm inclined to think that concerns he cited that the concerns he cited have to be serious. I've reached out to Epic for more information and will update if they reply. And that's from Andy Chalk. So, I, I have I have big expectations for this. Like I, I really I'm I'm gonna I, I really want to know and I'm gonna cover that story, um, as well. I'm gonna make sure I stay updated on that one because that one's definitely gonna be something I I look back into. So I'll make sure I star this now so I keep this article. Because I want to know what's going to happen next. And then we've got some... we got two different Fortnite stories for you guys. One from Ninja and the other one from that 16-year-old who won the tournament. Which one will load first? I do not know. So the 16-year-old who won the solo uh, tournament... I don't know how much money it was, but he won millions in that. So Fortnite's 16-year-old solo champion was swatted during a stream. Another article from Fraser Brown. This is from a day ago. And the article reads, The Fortnite World Cup solo champion, 16-year-old Kyle Booga, I don't know how to say his last name, so I'm not even going to attempt that, was swatted while streaming on the weekend, bringing armed police to his family's home. Luckily, it didn't escalate and nobody was harmed. In the middle of the stream... Uh, Kyle's dad tells him police are at the door. He leaves, but eventually returns. I got swatted, he says on the stream. You can see him rejoining the stream below. Where's the video link? Is that the video link? That is the video link. Uh, it ended well because one of the officers was from the area and knew, oh, knew Kyle, but didn't, but that doesn't diminish how disturbing it is that people with guns were sent to a teen's home. That's okay. Swatting, uh, swatting is being taken increasingly serious as anti-swatting as the, an anti-swatting bill has been passed in Kansas that adds a minimum sentence of 10 years. Seattle, uh, Seattle meanwhile, started the, an initiative where people who believe they were at risk of being swatted could add their names to a registry. A 2017 swatting ended in a death, and the man responsible was given a 20-year sentence. The internet is effing crazy, says Kyle. Cheers, Kotaku covering that story so uh, that's insane 
So yeah, he got swatted, but he got swatted by someone. Someone knew the kid. Basically, this is what happened here. They, someone knew the kid, so of course they they went to his house. So it wasn't really a, a a like a stranger, like a total stranger cop, like he did anything illegal. It's just somebody who knew he was there came over, which is still kind of weird. I I mean, if I had won that tournament and an an officer. A SWAT team shows up at my house. I'm gonna be a little freaked out. I'm gonna be like, "Why? Why are you here? And what? Like, what did I do?" Usually, I don't do things illegal. Most of the time, I don't th do things illegal. I got too many people watching me, so it's kind of not something I can get away with. I'd like to keep my job in the military. I uh, <laughs> I like my benefits. I will definitely not be doing anything illegal anytime soon. And then the last article is Ninja is is about Ninja giving his phone number to fans, which is uh, insane. Well, he was giving it to the internet. He so he tweeted it out to his uh, Twitter. He has like what seven point something million followers. Oh my gosh! This is what I hate about the internet. For some reason, it's not properly working i don't know why i'm the only one here today the title of the article is ninja gave his phone number to the entire internet but it was just a marketing thing so yesterday this article was from the 8th the 12th the article was from the 12th so yesterday uh famous fortnite guy tyler ninja Bel uh, blevins invited his 4.7 million hold on one second I'm getting a reference here one point is 4.7 million Twitter followers uh, to hit him up on his personal number and the number is there three one two five eight four four six eight four for some fun and games he says, I'm going to be able to contact you guys, text you guys and personally, send you guys awesome videos behind the scenes and other such content, he said. He also said he'd be texting a couple people back personally to set up some Vicaroys in Fortnite later. That's a weird way to shorten Victory Royale. But sure, uh, brace yourself for crushing for a crushing disappointment. It's a marketing thing. Click in the link results in an automated response with a familiar friendly message and a link to ninjas community.com page where you can enter your name, location, gender identity, uh, date of birth, and agree to an extremely long terms of use page, which nobody ever reads governing your limited, non-exclusive term, uh, terminable right to receive and to send communications through the community message messaging platform. The TOS says community says community gives its users the ability to send and receive text messages uh, to and from clients like Ninja, which sounds cool, which sounds kind of cool, but then it comes with, uh, then it comes hard with disappointment. And he has a couple of videos explaining what not on Twitter. And then in quotes, it has him saying, you understand that the, me that a message, you understand that a message sent by a client may may appear to come from a celebrity or other famous individual or influencer, but may actually be sent to, uh, be actually may be sent to on his or her behalf by public uh, relations or other social media representatives. It says you understand and acknowledge that conversations using the service are not private conversations with clients, but are intended as messages sent and interactions solely for the purposes of promoting or advertising the client and the client's products and services. Community also retains the right to monitor and save messages, uh, data collected with the service, along with whatever information you voluntarily submit and you can, and can pull your data, analyze it, compile, com sorry, compile, index, republish, and generally use your data for machine learning to improve the service, promote the service, and for all of the legal purposes. It also retains the right to share your data with other clients at its discretion. 
this is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, at its, it is at its core, but it's a fact of life when you're online. Deep data collection happens all the time, every day. In context, it's probably no worse than signing up for the Kiss Army, uh, which is definitely not something I'm still mad at my mom about because she wouldn't let me do it. And if you are a big Ninja fan, it could very well be a fun way to keep up with what he's getting up to. And I'm reasonably co confident that at some point, a few people who texted Ninja will end up playing a few rounds of Fortnite with him, but maybe don't hold your breath, uh, hoping it will be you. And for the record, yes, I did text him. And there's a... Uh... <laughs> yeah. And so this is this is something I've seen before. So um, Markiplier, the YouTuber, if anybody doesn't know who that is, he did a similar thing. But he didn't do it through community. He didn't. He he literally set up a separate phone number to have everybody text him. And Mark has twenty is twelve point two million followers. It's a lot of people, and not only on Twitter, but he he posted this on YouTube as a video. It was like and he invited people to text him. And for the record, I did text him and I did receive a text back, which is awesome. But it was a separate number where he could, when he was going to visit, you know, different cities for cons and all that stuff, uh, he would be able to coordinate, you know, meeting up with some people for doing extra stuff, like whether he's going to do filming or whatnot, uh, just a way to be more interactive with the fans. And that was a really cool thing uh, because the way he did it was, in, is, you know, in a professional way. I don't know if I still have that in my phone I believe it was this phone which I texted him from I don't remember this was a while ago like earlier this year it was a really cool thing but you know but it is a it's this what uh, Ninja's doing here it's it's it literally is just for promotion purposes like it's for nothing else except for pro promotional purposes uh, other than that I don't really know much about what Ninja does I know he plays Fortnite but that's about it I know they mixers all like, oh, we're so happy we got Ninja, and then they did something terrible to promote. They then Twitch promoted something, I don't know what it was, I don't remember what it was. Uh, they reported they promoted something on his his uh, channel apparently. That article I'm not looking up because that's a lot of news. I believe that's enough news for one day. That's a lot. My voice hurts from that. It's a lot of reading and a lot of discussion there. But, um, yeah, like, but Mark, when Mark did it, it's just for the purposes of meeting up with fans and actually, like, getting to talk to them. Uh, Ninja did it for, 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 um, performance reasons. So, it is what it is. So, that's fun. All right, we got through, what was that, five, five news stories. That's a lot. Like, that's the most I've had to cover in one podcast. And holy crap, it's a little, that's only slightly draining. And I didn't start my timer, so I don't know how long this has been going for. And I wish I would have. Now I feel stupid. But that's fine, because mm -hmm. that's normal. That's what happens. So the plan is to get more guests on the show before the season ends, because I want to get at least one more guest um, before the season ends. And uh, as you guys may notice, I probably would have split up the recording somewhere. There may be the commercial that, that's in there. I forgot. I usually try to leave a space for it, but this time I forgot. So I'll just split it up whenever between the articles and then you'll hear a commercial. It's fine. And I'm, I'm glad. See, that's the thing, though. I'm glad I'm like, I'm, I'm so glad I'm sponsored now because it's, it's a different feeling. Like this is now I can actually do this with a little bit more energy. I mean, I've been doing it for energy for energy with energy for years, but now having like an actual sponsor is like really something sweet. And I can't wait to, um, I can't wait for more to come. Like that, that's, that's just what's going to happen. More are going to come eventually. And I'm going to be, they're going to hear a lot more commercials. There's going to be one of them at the beginning and one in the middle. I try not to over, I'm going to try not to overload, you know, uh, the podcasts with too many commercials. Like I'm not going to put like six commercials in one podcast, I'm going to try to, with, when it comes to having different sponsors, I'm going to, you know, leave certain sponsors for certain episodes and whatnot. So it'll be, um, it'll be interesting to see how this turns out. Cause right now having one sponsor, I can have, I, I can put advertisements where I please. 
And if you do have a podcast out there, um, and you're not someone I know, definitely go, if you like go to anchor and start your podcast if you if you if you're serious about it don't just go and do this thing if you're not serious about it um because podcasting does take commitment to do believe me i've been doing this for three years and it just finally got sponsored uh because now i was introduced to a new tool that i had didn't have before but definitely has helped me out but after almost i'm sorry almost four years now i have been four years yeah sorry I'm, i keep saying three years i've been doing this for four years I, uh, I'm bad. I'm bad with time because I'm like it's 2015, but it's 2019 now, so it's four years. So I have been doing this for four years. Oh, hold on, hold on, everybody! This announcement is coming to you live from my email. <laughs> I'm available on another platform. What is it going to be this time? What is it going to be this time? Where am I? I am now available on Pocket Casts. Oh my! God. This is so cool. Like. Guys, I don't like I like I don't take any of this for granted. I like I love I love this every time I do it. Oh my gosh. I am now I'm now available on Pocket Casts. That's so cool. Oh, I love that. That's so great. So now you can find me on what is it? Eight platforms now? Like it just makes me so happy to to, to know that I like I have this. Um actually I'm going to put the sponsor in after I stopped those articles. Um, but that's crazy, guys. So I'm available on Google Podcasts. You can find me on Google Podcasts. Let me pull up Anchor real quick so I can make sure I get this accurate. That like it's it's so crazy to, to to see where I am now because it like it really like warms my heart and makes me really happy to see that after so many years, you know, progress, you know, the hard work actually starts to pay off and I'm getting more exposure now like i'm i'm on new websites i'm on places where i never even heard of like i've never heard of pocket casts so it's so it's so awesome guys like it's this is this is this is the dream this is the dream this is what i uh, dreamed of when i first started this thing i'm like i'm gonna be everywhere and that was a plan but people are finding me now and it's and it's awesome and it, it this this happened not because of just me, but because of the people who I know. They've been, sh- I know they've been sharing this podcast out. I know they've been listening to it themselves. So I thank them. You know, I thank all the people that have been on the show, Pion Slayer, uh, DeBoss Gaming, Burly Man, like without that, without those guys and everybody else who I've obviously missed by now. And recently, um, Edge Tectonic, Anthony, I know you're out there probably listening, but shoot, like this has been a journey. Um, and, we did it. We did it. We're not, we're not the end yet, but we did it before the end of season one. So when season two starts, you know, it'll be a fresh take. I don't know if I'll change. That's a funny thing. Cause about season two, I don't know what's going to change about the show. Cause I want to change some things, but I, at the same time, it's like, well, what do we do? Um, because I also want to make sure I get, you know, the other episodes that I have available up on, the platforms that I have them uh, uh, that I'm on because I have all, all my podcasts before this one are on YouTube available full playlist, the full, all the episodes before this one. And I, um, I want to make sure people have a chance to listen to those, but some of those I can't put up because at the, at the time I was using copyrighted music because on YouTube I'm not monetized. So I can, I'm free to do what I want because they, you know, there's no strikes that happen on my channel because I'm not monetized. So I'm, of, I'm able to do that, but people from all over the United States are listening to my podcast from the East coast to the West coast. And that's insane to, it's, a, it's insane to see the analytics and insane to see just where, you know, people are listening to me from. And I love that. And I'm going to make the announcement after, um, after this video is over, but this is incredible. Like it's truly an incredible experience to have, um, your, your, your podcast, like something you've been working on, just little old me sitting here in a, in a room, you know, with a computer and another computer and my phone and this huge TV monitor. Um, and just talking, talking for hours, for minutes with somebody, without somebody and just doing it because I love it. 
Like this is something I truly love. If you don't know, I love podcasts. Like this is my this is my this is my um happy place. And I absolutely love doing it. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. Anything. So I thank you all all out there who do listen to this podcast. Purple Torch Gaming, I know she she's out there too. She listens. Um like these people are absolutely wonderful. They've given me the opportunities that I have. And that's crazy. So you can find me on Anchor. You can find me on Google Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Pocket Casts now as well. You can find me on Radio Public. You can find me on SoundCloud and Spreaker. And also, all as always, on YouTube, where some of you, most of you are probably listening to this. But shoot, go out and check out those other uh, places you can find the podcast. Google Casts, there's an issue because I had two Spreaker accounts. The it And it linked it. And it linked um, the podcast to the... It linked to the original one, which was the one I had in high school that I hadn't uploaded anything to. But that account's gone because I had to delete it because the um, information was 100% outdated and there was there's no point in updating it because I already ha- I have another one. I have a more updated one, more current one, which I'll see how I can get that linked and get that sorted out. But shoot, like eight different platforms you can find me on. Eight different platforms. I'm still waiting for the day that I'm on uh, either Google Play and or iTunes. So that way uh, I can have a little bit more exposure. Google, what are you doing? I see you're active. Don't be doing crazy stuff. I'm watching you. She listens when she's not supposed to. And she activates when she's not supposed to. I didn't ask you for anything. Okay. (laughs) All right. Um, But... Feel free to share this with your friends. Go out, go on YouTube and check out the rest of the podcasts. There is a ton of good, there's a ton of good ones in there. And there are some bad ones in there. You can pick them out. You can find them, but they're good. They're good to listen to. If you're not doing anything, just put them on in the background and just chill and relax. Cause I want you to have a good time and just be able to sit there and listen um, as well. And also be sure to check out the Patreon because uh, I occasionally will do giveaways over there for all the patrons. And uh, if you want to help to keep the show running, that's where to go. Also, you can also donate through Anchor. You can also, not Anchor.com, Anchor.fm. I screw that up all the time. But you can donate through there. You can become a supporter on there. It's a, a monthly subscription from a dollar to, you know, five dollars. I don't know what the next one is past that, but like, a dollar a month? That's too easy. That is way too easy. So feel free to check those out. Go check those out. Keep Help me keep the show running. You know, donate whatever you can. Any amount, uh, any amount helps. Every dollar counts. And it's absolutely amazing that, um, that we're here. We're here. Not just me, but you guys too. Because everybody who's listening is along for the ride just as much as I am. You guys to get to experience this progress just like I do. So, wow, pocket casts. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Eight different platforms you can find my podcast on. That's something else. Um, wow. It's like I feel like I won the Academy Award or a Nobel Prize. So, I'm going to keep doing podcasts, guys. Like, it's crazy. I hope I said that right. Episode 57? If that's not right, then. Somebody correct me in the comments. I know you will. Um, but shoot. I'm going to end this before I start crying. Uh, <laughs> nah. But um, like it, this is that this is really cool. This is honestly really cool. And I never thought I'd, I'd get to this this point. Because this is truly interesting. And hopefully I will get more guests on here. Um, so yes. If you want to support the channel... You can go through. You can go through. You can go through PayPal. You can go through uh, Patreon. You can become. You can become a patron. You can become a supporter through Anchor.fm. Find me, Goof Norton. I'm there. I'll put my links in the description of wherever you find this podcast. I will check out more of uh, Pocket Casts, so that way I can see what their platform is like. It's crazy crazy also blue apron you're missing out on the sponsorship opportunity man i'm 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 growing over here and and you're just you're just missing it i i want i want you to sponsor me blue apron because i love your food 
I love your recipes. They're so good. If anybody doesn't know, there's a running. That's it's just a running joke. Um, it's uh, less of a joke at this point because now that I do have one sponsor, uh, I'm looking for more, as always. But Blue Apron, because I use their service so much, and I've there's been count like not countless times, but there's been quite a few times where I have given them like a, a nice good a good shout out not even just like oh blue apron's good you guys should check it out i've like given a freaking thorough description of what blue apron does and how good their service is and i've got nothing from them <laughs> and i just want them to sponsor me like i that's all i want i just want them to sponsor me like i, I like i love you guys like and i and i've also done giveaways with the free boxes that they give me to help others and I've and there's a f quite a few people out there who've gotten the box um and I've heard no complaints from them blue apron is a wonder blue apron is a wonderful service if you use hello fresh you're dead to me all right you're dead to me you need to use blue apron they're awesome so thanks everybody so much for listening if you have any suggestions for future topics let me know and I will be sure to do some research and talk about them but other than that thanks guys for coming along the journey it's almost the end. It's almost we're almost to the end of season one. Season two will come. We'll we'll take it. We'll, so with season two, we'll take a, uh, take a break from se after season one ends, and then we'll go. Uh, we'll start season two back when I get back from my trip in October. So it'll be like a almost a month break. I'll have some episodes to upload in between that time, but for the most part, it'll be a month break for me. So thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.